Hey beauties and welcome back to I Am Beautiful Hustle TV. I know you guys been waiting on this video and I'm bringing it to you today. Today will be a complete start to finish video which means I will be showing you guys how I bleach, pluck, make my um, custom frontal wig using Gorilla Glue and also installing my wig using my lace adhesive. Now today this hair is provided by me, my company, my brand, the Beautiful Hustler brand and this is a 20 inch transparent lace frontal and four bundles of 32, which is two 32s and two 34s. And all of this is from my raw hair collection. Um, if you don't know, I just rebrand or uh, well, relaunched my uh, raw hair collection. And I will be showing you guys the quality, how it bleaches, how it plugs, how it looks when you install it, and all of the above. Now, for starters, I'm going to show you guys how I... Um, bleach my knots this was highly requested as well as you know an updated plucking video so i decided to do everything all in one so for starters um i'm showing you guys everything i like to use and when it comes to bleaching knots i i like to use the quick blue uh bleaching powder over the bw2 one because this powder is thicker usually when you use the bw2 and you add liquid it gets watery really fast but with this quick blue powder um it's very thick, so you don't have to really worry, in a, uh, you know, worry about your consistency being too, um, like too loose, too um, watery, because it takes a lot for it to get watery, which is also good because once you spread the uh, powder onto your knots, you do not have to worry about the hair uh, bleeding. Well, not bleeding, but bleaching over on the actual hairs and making the hairs blonde because it's thick and it just really gets those knots bleached really well. And when I bleach the knots, I like to use 50 volume developer. You can use 30, you can use 40, you can use 50, it's up to you. You can use 10, 20, but the lower the volume, the longer it's take to, you know, it's gonna take to process. So I just like to use the highest volume because I don't bleach my knots for that long. I just pretty much like to do it and get it over with. And um, before I even start to apply the bleach and everything, I usually take holding spray, but since I ran out, I just took some pump it up spritz and sprayed it on the front of the hairs of the frontal. And I just combed all the hairs down. That way there's no hairs, you know, flying away or all over the place. And it also gives the uh, front of the hairs like a little firm hold. So when I flip the frontal, it's just easier for me to just spread the glue and not worry about getting any bleach on the hairs so however i'm gonna go ahead and continue to spread the uh bleaching powder all over the knots and i like to bring it a little bit past the hairline just to make sure that i get all of the knots bleached like evenly and i'm just going to flip that upside down back onto that foil paper that way i can see it processing and that way um, I can also monitor the bleach not getting on the hairs. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay that down. And I'm just going to watch it for a while um, during the whole bleaching process. And, you know, it all depends on how long. Like, you never know how long exactly it's going to take to bleach the knots, you know, bright enough. So you just want to continue to watch it. But here, after letting it sit for about 20 minutes, um, the knots are blonde, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and take my purple shampoo. And I went ahead and shampooed that frontal out. But in, for me, what I like to do is leave that purple shampoo sitting on those knots for about 10 minutes. And then I will go ahead and wash that out and condition it. And this is what the frontal looks like after bleaching the knots. And I still have not plucked anything at all. And you know, as I mentioned before, the frontal does come pre-plucked. So this is just right after bleaching and toning the knots. And I haven't even begun plucking yet and it's already pre-plucked. But in my opinion, I love how pre-plucked the sides are, but I do wanna go in some more towards the middle of that frontal. So I will go ahead and begin to pluck those hairs out.
when plucking a pre-plucked frontal what i like to do is pull down everything that's already pre-plucked and then i like to start pulling the hairs out i also like to create little uh rows and pluck in like different sections so as you can see i started by plucking you know further back behind the hairline because i like to thin out um hair starting from the back of the hairline and work my way forward that way you don't have to really worry about bald spots and you know you can really take your time and see what you're plucking out and i am using the revlon tweezers they're like the revlon flat tweezers and i get these from the hair store they come in a little pack but you can find regular flat um tweezers like this in the hair store as well they don't have to you know specifically be revlon but um i know that revlon and kiss has those flat tweezers like for sure because i purchased both brands and i just like to pull my you know tweezer um straight forward and back and just pull those hairs out and you want to make sure that you're combing it as you uh pluck it out so you can really see what you've already pulled out and you also want to be sure that you are not plucking in the same spot over and over because that's how you create ball spots so even though i sped up this video you still want to take your time and just pull those hairs out and once you feel like you pulled out enough in one section you pull another section um you know that's closer to the front and just continue to pluck in between And as I mentioned before, um, this hair is from my brand. This frontal is from my brand as well. And the hair that I will be using to make my wig. And I did I uh, did not pluck the sides at all. I'm only plucking the middle because I felt like the sides were already pre-plucked enough. But once you finish plucking behind the hairline, you can pull everything backwards. And you can also pluck the in, you know, in the front of that hairline as well. And now that I plucked that front, now I feel like it matches the, um, you know, the size better and everything is pre-plucked perfectly. And this is what it looks like after me pre-plucking and I'm putting the lace up against my skin. As I mentioned before, this is a transparent lace frontal, 20 inch, and all this hair is straight hair. So um, now that I did that, I like to kind of like pre-press out my frontal. So um, what I'm going to do is take my Beautiful Hustler Glam Wax Stick and I'm going to apply that wax all on the front hairline of my frontal. And then I'm going to go in with my plug-in hot comb. And this hot comb is from Kendra's Boutique on Instagram. You can just go to her Instagram and, you know, click her site and, of course, purchase this hot comb. And I like to do this so my frontal is already kind of neat and all the hairs are, you know, pressed backwards. That way when installing it is easier and also when making a wig, you can see how natural and neat your hairline will look. And now that we are done prepping the frontal, let's go ahead and put this wig together. Now, as I mentioned, again, this is 32, 32, and 234 is from my raw hair collection, my straight hair. And you can now purchase on my site, okay? And yes, y'all, we will be using Gorilla Glue. Now, I know y'all seen, um, what's her name? Terica, Testica, whatever her name is. She went viral for making a very not smart decision by putting this on her real hair was you know using the adhesive on her real hair but i can assure you guys that today it will not be stuck to my head <laughs> only the tracks will be stuck to the cap so after seeing her use that gorilla adhesive spray i said hmm i wonder can you use this making a wig and when i that thought came across my mind my homegirl Kima actually made her a Chinese bang wig using a Gorilla Glue and it came out bomb. So I said, oh yeah, definitely got to try this out and put this on the channel. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my frontal wig and I will be securing my tracks using the Gorilla Glue. Now, in my opinion, this is a way better hold than regular bonding glue and a way better hold than the hot glue gun. Simply because the hot glue gun honestly peels right off and bonding glue, the tracks could slip so easily. 
And when I went on my vacation, and if y'all haven't seen the vlog yet, make sure y'all subscribe to Beauty Beast TV and watch our three-day vlog on vacay. Like, I went underwater and everything when I, um, you know, wore this wig, and my tracks did not slip when using that Gorilla Glue. So that Gorilla Glue, when making the wig, really gives you a superior hold and also gives you a waterproof hold as far as your tracks not slipping. So before we get into all of that, the key to making a frontal wig is you have to have the correct the correct placement of the frontal and i know you guys have seen a million and one frontal videos and they're pretty much you know frontal wig videos and they're pretty much all the same when you place the frontal you want to place it you know about an inch past the cap and you also want your frontal to have somewhat of an m shape so that's why you guys see me pin the center first you know past the cap and then you want to go ahead and pull the sides directly down sideways and make sure it's flat and you just want to put pins in all of those places and as you can see the hairline is looking very natural so you know my wig will look very natural yes 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 and that's on bleaching and plucking and quality frontals and I have everything pinned down in the back and it's super flat. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the frontal down. I did not hot glue gun the frontal simply because no matter what, if I'm doing a frontal sewing or a frontal quick weave or whatever, I'm making a wig, I always sew down the frontal. So I will go in with my needle and thread and just go ahead and hand stitch the frontal. And what I'm going to do is start from the center first and sew down one side and then I'm going to go back and then, you know, sew the other side down. So I went ahead and stitched it completely down. So now we're going to go in with the Gorilla Glue. Now this Gorilla Glue, it was only $3.47 and I bought three of them for Walmart because I wasn't sure how many I was going to need. And I bought two of the paint on Gorilla Glues, like you dip it and you paint it onto the hairs. Um, you know, or paint it onto whatever you're supposed to be gluing because it's just clearly not for hair, but we're going to use it today for hair. So right now I took my pump it up spritz and I sprayed the whole cap first because I always use spritz when making a, you know, a quick weave wig. And then once I unravel my first 34 inch, I'm going to, I'm going to measure, um, from cap to cap. And you want to make sure before you even start gluing, you have your uh, dome cap stretched out all the way completely flat. And now I'm taking that Gorilla Glue and I'm using the nozzle, like the brush kind and i'm just brushing that glue right across the tracks the same way you would do it if it was regular bonding glue or if you was using a hot glue gun placing the glue right on those tracks i am painting and as you can see i am painting um two tracks at a time because you guys know i like to double bond um double weft bond my wigs or my you know my bondings period so I took that uh, Gorilla Glue and I placed it on both tracks. And you want to be very careful because this stuff is very, very sticky. But as you can see, the glue is on both tracks. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it down right where I placed it and prepare to cut it. And when I tell y'all, this Gorilla Glue sticks in no time. Usually, like, do y'all see how stuck that is already? Usually with bonding glue, you got to hold it down blow dry it making sure it don't slip like and if i was to pull it right away it would definitely slip but with this gorilla glue these tracks is not going nowhere when i tell you nowhere nowhere literally when i placed that uh track down uh those tracks down after putting that glue it was already stuck i just pressed it all around and it was stuck i tugged on it y'all see it was stuck it did not slip when you brush through it it don't slip when you get in the water and get your tracks wet it don't slip 
like this is not a game like this glue is gorilla like for real strong and tough and extra heavy duty like everything a gorilla is this glue is so i highly highly recommend that you make your wigs with gorilla glue i ain't saying glue down your wigs with it and i definitely ain't saying do no ponytails with it but if you want to make a secure waterproof wig okay use this gorilla glue so i went ahead and you know used the first bundle and now i'm opening up that second bundle and i'm just going to repeat the same steps cut a uh, well measure cut apply the gorilla glue on the tracks and bond it and i'm just going to do that till i work my way all the way to the top And you just want to keep going and going in like the half circle motion. You just want to pretend that this is a regular human head. And the same way you would bond the tracks in if you was doing a regular frontal bond in. That's the exact same thing you do when you are making a frontal wig. So all you are doing is just doing a frontal bond in or whatever you guys call it. Frontal quick weave. The same way you would bond those tracks for your client is the same way you want to bond it for your wig because it's just a head that doesn't move. And I went ahead and uh, Gorilla glued all of the tracks on and it is secure. We did it all the way up to the top. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove all of those pins and also, you know, uh, pull the dome cap off the, the head and a little bit of the cap did get on it but that's why i also applied that cap first because i wanted to protect the um dome cap from getting stuck to the actual mannequin so i put a regular stocking cap first before even doing this because this one this is my first time and i don't know if it was gonna get stuck to the mannequin head but it did not just a little bit of that cap did you know get a little stuck but just pull it off you know and just a little wig cap on the inside ain't gonna kill you burn your head off or nothing like that so it wasn't no big deal to me so pretty much um this is what it looks like after taking it off the mannequin head those tracks are secure 
and now I'm gonna go ahead and begin to install it now I did pre-style it I already had you know flat iron the hair and you know did a part down the middle and when I tell y'all this hair is the bomb this hair is the bomb.com if you don't know get to know like I literally have one of the best quality hairs on the market and when I say it's quality it's quality and one thing about quality hair you can look at it and tell when it's quality some hair looks cheap but then some hair looks like yeah you know that hair was good yeah you know it's bomb and that's the beautiful hustler brand raw hair collection period so now um that i showed you guys how i made my secure wig using the gorilla glue now i'm going to show you guys how i install it like i told y'all it was going to be a lot in this video from plucking the bleaching to making a wig to installing it was highly requested so i just say you know what i'm gonna do all of it in one so for starters what i'm gonna do is just cut all the extra lace from around my ears and as y'all can see my wig fixed my head perfectly and i'm not doing no ball cap method today because i'm simply in a rush we was actually getting ready to go to orlando and at this point we were supposed to leave at 8 a.m and it was already 1 p.m and we still did not leave and we actually didn't get on the road till four so um, I'm going to start my hair here in Miami on my beautiful background, but then I'm going to finish it in Orlando once we get there, uh, you know, get there. So, um, however, uh, like I said, I'm not doing no ball cap and I already cleaned my hairline with the alcohol 99%. So now I'm just going to go ahead and begin to spread my layers of adhesive um, and, you know, just spread it out nice and evenly. And I did use five layers simply because I knew it was going to be a long week and ain't no telling what we was going to do on that vacation. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to apply all of my layers. And once all my layers are applied, I will go ahead and begin to tack down my lace. So now that I've applied all five layers and my fifth layer has turned clear, I'm going to start by pulling the center down first and kind of locking it into place with the adhesive. And then I'm going to work my way to the first side and I'm just going to comb, press and also apply heat before even, you know, um, laying the second side. And as I mentioned before in my previous tutorial, guys, I don't care how easy uh, YouTubers make it seem like it is to do your own wigs, but it's really not that easy. It can get frustrating, especially when you don't have nobody to help you hold the sides down or, you know, do whatever technique you usually do when installing on your clients. So if you have a hard time putting on your wigs, don't feel bad because some days I have those days too. Some days I get aggravated. Some days I snatch my whole wig off, do it all over again. It happens to the best of us. Okay. So, you know, however, um, just take your time and do one side of the you know one side at a time if you have to or i see some influencers break it down in three sections you know just do what works best for you at the end of the day and just really take your time and because i wanted a super natural and neat hairline um that's why i pre-plucked it the way i you know i plucked it the way i did and i also pre you know hot combed it because i did not want to do a baby hair look i wanted to do a no baby hair look so when doing all of that the prepping steps before installing is very very important and that's why i showed you guys all of that from the start up till now but um after placing my glue and tacking down my lace i did tie it down with that melt belt for 15 minutes and now i'm gonna go in with my lace glider and just begin to raise off all of that extra lace
And now that I finished razoring off my lace, as you guys can see, I have a bit of a halo hair hairline. And I totally hate this, but it's okay. It's normal. And I also get this question a lot of my DMs. How do I prevent the halo around my hairline or remove it and everything like that? And what I did was just go in with a darker foundation, like way darker, like three shades darker than my skin tone, which is actually the Java color. Because at first I used uh, the Rich Mahogany in the cognac to do my um frontal at first but you guys already know with transparent lace sometimes you have to go in with a darker foundation to really make it blend so i went in with that darker foundation which was the java and i also sprayed my hairline with that tresemme holding spray again as my second step melting process and as you can see it is blending and looking way more realistic and way more natural and that is the goal you want to go for and honestly, guys, it's all about technique. If you mess up, you just have to know how to fix it. And I'm going to tie it down again with that melt belt. And I just let that thing ride, y'all. Ride till I got all the way to Orlando. Okay, honey? And when I got there, I we checked into the hotel. I did my makeup, everything like that to really give this look a nice look. look. And of course, we was going out. It was vacation time. So now that I did my makeup, I'm going to go ahead and remove that melt belt. And here is what it's looking like. Very nice and natural. No baby hairs. You know, everybody ain't baby hair crazy. Some people like a natural hairline. And I just took, um, you know, the rest of that foundation that was on my little um, blending brush and just tapped it across my forehead and began a hairline just to make sure that my um, there was no separation between my makeup and, you know, like the gap between the melt belt to my hairline so i just tap a little foundation that was left on my beauty my beauty blender onto my hairline and now i'm just combing all of that holding spray out to make it nice soft and natural and then pretty much once i do that that will complete my look i just wanted a super natural and soft look i didn't want any baby hairs i just wanted my hair to be pressed edges to be well not edges but my hairline to be soft and natural looking and that would pretty much sum up this tutorial but of course before we go we have to black spray and conceal that part so i'm gonna go in with my java foundation and just go ahead and line my part up and then go in with that black spray and just spray around the hairline to make it you know give it a nice and clean sharp look and then i will officially be done with the install so yeah i'm just gonna spray that smooth some things down get everything laid to perfection how i like it and i will just drop you a finishing look video at the end i hope you guys enjoyed this long video thank you guys for watching you want to purchase my hair the link is down below raw hair collection it don't play it sways and it be laid so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment and share this video and subscribe to beauty beast tv bye